than 10 feet for doozers. That's it, that's it for me. I have a question. Oh, yes. Hi. Yes. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. Hi, here. you guys. Silly creature. I don't know who I'm speaking to <laughs> specifically. That's but okay. That's all right. I, I've heard so many stories about Jim and Frank and other Muppeteers improvising on set, and we just got to watch you for a few. Is improvising on set like a key part of puppeteering? Oh God, yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> really? We're it actually, absolutely is. These two characters especially, we've become kind of <laughs> a, a infamous on set for just <laughs> taking them to places that are insane. But it, it, it really, it keeps you in character in between takes. Right, And right. you find things, yes. you know? I mean, the writers really, we, we were just playing the first couple episodes of Fraggle with Cotterpen and Architect with their, mm -hmm. their insane background and history and, and the way we would play off of each other. And the writers actually loved it so much, they started kind of writing that into the scripts. Mm -hmm. So it really, it can not only pay off from a story place, but it really just gets us where we need to be. Yes. And it, yes, it keeps us in that playful, playful zone. And we, we you know, we improvise during takes, we improvise after the scene is done, we just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it makes it makes the cut, but it does further develop the character and, yeah. and helps us and helps helps every helps everyone, yes. right, sir? It can only get better. Mm -hmm. You can only find more magic. You know what I mean, <laughs> silly creature Adam? <laughs> mm -hmm. I do. Is this freaking you out? Not at all. Oh, good. good. Yay, what I'm you're one of us. <laughs> what I'm noticing is you uh, there's a how do I say this? There's a, time. there's a perception that like in a shop like this, mm. there'd be a character, you would build a thing, service mm. the character, and then the character goes on set and does character type things. But in reality, there's a creative enterprise that has to go find that character. And it starts with a drawing and then becomes yes. a mechanic. And then it comes to you guys. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm guessing that some of the things they say surprise you. It, it does in, in the sense that I think that you're so fueled by the richness of the world. You know, it's such an incredible world to play in. The characters are so beautifully thought out. They're built so gorgeously. They have little details that that we even noticed yeah, as we went on. We're like, oh, look at this little this little thing in my pocket here that I never realized. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you start to find those things, yeah. and it's it's like you're being given this well thought out, enriched gift, that, and you just get to take and take it beyond. Mm -hmm. That's thrilling because mm -hmm. it, 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 mean, it means that what comes out is something brand new every time. Yeah. Not, not, you're not just, you're doing the farthest thing from just reading a script. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Very much so. I mean, they're well said, reading. sir. Well <laughs> said. That's good. You're deep. That's weird. Wow. He is deep. He gets it, sir. He get, You know what? He gets it. He does. Give this he man the bullets it. now. <laughs> Call them now. See, we're, we're emphasizing. We're yes, we feel now. very strongly. Look at that. Look at that we're movement. We're leaning. We can give you some disco moves if you want. Look at that. Mm. Doozer got back. That's mm, right. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Not really sure what that means, but I heard it. <laughs> the sympathetic movement of this platform really adds something too, doesn't it, Yeah, sir? you're turning away from yeah. me. I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. Have I offended you? <laughs> oh, Look at me when I'm, I'm talking so, to I'm you. I'm swiveling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what have I said? There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. All right. I love the way their noses move. Yeah. Oh yes, uh, I found out that um, our department props would boop. They, did you boop at the doozers' noses today? They literally would go and touch their noses and go. Oh, I booped a doozers' nose. I didn't know that. Like every day, every time the doozers were out, they had to boop the noses because they're so soft. Mm -hmm. And they are surprisingly soft. I was impressed with how soft they were. It took yes. me forever to to realize that uh, if you it just makes your day. I invite you to do it. <laughs> Maybe not when the camera's rolling, but you oh, oh, do, no, it. do it now. Do it now. Do up our noses. Oh, that's yep. really yep. lovely. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that joyful? Yep, it really is. So joyful. It's like a oat. It's it's almost like a, a what do you call it? Like a haute couture M and M. Sure. Right, like Ooh. the kind that a fancy restaurant would serve. That's, I don't, that's, that's wow. You know that I'm is? sorry that's for calling good, part of you edible. It's a good skincare oh. routine. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Keep it. Keep it edible. <laughs> supple. <laughs> supple. That's what I couldn't think of. Supple. Yes, I supple. really like the uh, your antenna. Those look Thank great. You. Mm. Thank you. Thank um, you. I'm super alert. They have movement with my head, which I really like. Those are actually new for this series because the original, they were just basically pieces of wire and they were very stiff. Mm. So you're getting some more performance? Yes. You get a little more free movement and they just look really cute. Mm -hmm. do, do you ever, in your home life, will pick up a toaster and start to make voices for it? Do you, like some random object? Is it, uh, is it a, a pathology? When my daughter was small, I absolutely did. Yeah. But just in my spare time, 
No. <laughs> Fair enough. It's a little busman. <laughs> busman <laughs> Holly. Sure. Calls to Newcastle. <laughs> I did it as yes. a kid. I mean, I would take like the, yeah. like the little uh, the little sh- you know milk milk bowl for coffee and stuff like that, and make and make the mouth move yeah. and stuff like that, and put a voice behind it. And so that's what, um, my parents were not shocked when this became my career because <laughs> they're like, yeah, you've been doing it since you were like four years old. Yeah. But I think it's it's finding you know the magic of putting a life into something inanimate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, we, you know, when we take our hands out, they're just. Yeah, they flop over they're and their gone. mouths are open, and, and they, it's a little they could sad. be wax figures. But you know, it, that's the magic of just the littlest bit of movement mm-hmm. from our hands creates hopefully something very lifelike. And- eloquent, sir, very eloquent. Thank you. Very, very nice. I'm working on my book. Ah, you see, that's I'm right. testing it out. When was the first time you guys picked up these characters to perform them? Wow. wow. Together, it was actually on set. Uh huh. It was yeah. the first time we performed them. Wow. In season one. Yep. Yeah. We had very little rehearsal time, just the way it worked out because of because of COVID season one. So we sure. we had to kind of like get in there and just go. And and it was funny. We when we've known each other a long time, we have a great rapport as friends and as performers. But I don't know. It was like we picked them up, and all of a sudden it was like this feels right. Yeah, I I don't know. And I I think just furthering the relationship that they have. That you know she's the downtrodden. She's I always say she's the kid who says the emperor has no clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's who she is. Okay. She's the one who sees through everything. She's she has no pretense, no ego. Really, just about is getting is about getting the job done, and finding she's got a the best mind. solution. She yeah, she really does solve the, Thank solve you, the sir. problems. Thank you. Well, I like the fact that she's using a a, a, a securing pin both mm. on her mm. on her vest, but also as hair clips. Yes, yes. those are cotter pins. That's yeah. I think that's hence my name. Oh, there see what we did. See what we did. <laughs> Look now at I that. Understand everything. Yes. And my name's Architect. You'll never guess what I do. <laughs> I, I can't imagine. <laughs> yes. We, we're, we, we're, we're not especially complicated on the inside. On the All this mechanic stuff is complicated, mm. but we're, we're, we're simple beings. Yep. I'm the, you know, I've got, I'm smarter than my boss. It's one of those situations, you know. I, mean? I don't know what she's saying, but it's probably yes, right. Yeah, <laughs> really, I'm going to lean forward for emphasis. You are. Look at that. Adam, emphasis. you know what I mean, right? I totally mm-hmm. know what emphasis. you mean. Emphasis. Mm-hmm. We've all been there. Stretches the calves to its good, you know. <laughs> got to keep limber. So that must be thrilling to watch an episode and see a ad, uh, uh, something you came up with at the spur of the moment after so the cut yeah. supposedly happened. Yeah, that happens quite a bit, That's which is awesome. it's lovely to be so uh, to be so entrusted with these with these characters and and that everyone on set is, is a really is a big fan of the the process too. Yeah, the yeah. joyful, free fun, and that comes a lot from Johnny and our leadership team for sure. Well, but also, so, oh sorry, well, so it, that has to be. Like institutionalized because you could walk onto somebody else's set and they're like, we got to go, 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 get it done, yes. get it done, and that doesn't engender the performance. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a tricky line. Our our first ads always have have to find where that line sure. is because we do have a day to finish and we do have a show to shoot. Yeah, but there is generally room for uh for play. And that really comes from Jim. I mean, I think Jim yeah. started that that atmosphere of like, let's play to find the best possible version of what this needs to be. And and I, we try to keep that going because it's true. It's like you know, you're going to find the best comedy, you're going to find the best storytelling if everyone's feeling like they're they're collaborating and they're contributing. Yeah. And it's wonderful to see a set full of people that just feel like everyone's getting a chance to put their piece into the into the beautiful pie. So when you show up on set for the first time to puppet these guys, I've seen, I mean, I think I've handed Dave Goles a puppet and had him work through Ooh. voices for a second or two. Do you do, you had to do that on set on the day you're shooting. You had to find the voices and yeah. find performance in there. Well, Catherine Mullen originated this character. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was a, a matter of voice matching. There you go. And Jerry so Nelson fair, originated fair uh, Architect, so, mm-hmm. and, and he's a hero to all of us. And so it was mm-hmm. a little bit like, let's As is take Kathy. what they did. Yeah, oh my gosh, Kathy's a genius. And so you take that, as your base, and then yeah. we've been entrusted with carrying these characters on, and then it's like, so then, just like they brought themselves to the role, let's start with the base of what they start, what they brought, and then let's see what we can add on that feels like us and feels mm-hmm. right for us. Because, you know, our style of improv is different than Kathy and Jerry's sure. were, and that's what's great about these characters is they, they live on, and they keep growing and evolving, you know? There's no end, Adam. Well said. You Thank see you. what I'm no saying? Thank you. There's no end. Mm-mm. I really wish you guys could wave. Well, so do we. There. <laughs> <laughs> Any movement? I don't like twerking, really. You look like I'm jazzercising more than waving, but you know, again, keep it limber. You're welcome to the Dome anytime, Adam. Yes, yeah. come on by. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm swiveling again. I'm swiveling. You swivel. Goodbye, Carter Pan. Oh, no. I'm over here. What's up? Oh. There, there we go. She's afraid of eye contact. It's okay. Mm. You ever hear their voices in your head? <laughs> I, um, I don't know. If I, 
I find myself sometimes if I'm talking like him long enough because it's so up here in my nose that like, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll call break and I'll go get a cup of coffee and be like, thanks so much. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, I gotta get out of there. Yeah, the improv goes on and on. We, on and on. We really love these characters. I mean, we, we yeah. every time we get a script that has caught up in an architect, we're like, it's like, it's gold. It's so much fun. And you don't find any, you perform characters with your hands directly in those characters as well. You don't find Ooh. any loss of translation from the electronics to the little character. Um, well, it's a very different style of puppet right, and a very right. different style of puppetry. So, you know, we just, we, we work with what we got, right, sir? Mm, yes. Mm. And really, Faz Fazakis, who, who created the system for the original series, you know, the, it was, the, the doozers were pretty much just rod puppets in the beginning. Right, right. Which are hard because the human hand is hard to, to control something that small, right? Yeah, How hard yeah. is that? So then he had the brilliant idea to put it into these waldos, these sleeves, so that you're basically doing what we do with hand puppets, but just on a much smaller scale. So that is... It's such a it's it's an it's freeing, mm -hmm. you know, because we can just worry about the line delivery and the performance. We're not worried if our hands are shaking. You're not sitting there yeah, getting exactly. cramps right. and all they're like right, tilting right. over. Mm -hmm. And you're still working with these characters on set. You're looking at a monitor. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is it a yeah. backwards monitor? Is it the yes? yes? <laughs> Which becomes really really intuitive after a while. People don't believe us because we're so used to mirror because of you know sure. of our, our cell phones, right? But it really becomes intuitive. And actually, if they if they ever switch the image to make it mirror, it's hilarious. You see all these puppeteers be like, oh, oh God, oh, oh my oh, God, oh. God As if we've never panic. seen a mirror ever in our lives before. <laughs> it's really funny. And it takes a couple seconds, you're like, what's wrong with, oh what's my. What's going on? Because oh. oh. <laughs> we're so used to it now. We're so yeah. used to the, the switch style. But And what's the view you're looking at on the monitor? It's not what the character's seeing. It's actually. What the director sees, what the, what director the camera sees. sees. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And we usually have a split because we have two, it's a two camera show. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's another puppeteer, always, there's another puppeteer underneath, sometimes under the stage, because these are little rod pockets right. here. Right. I the saw these. I guess these right. are part of those. Yes. Okay, yeah. And so there's a puppeteer under the stage or in front of the stage, um, sometimes turning the body, but most often doing the hands. Got it. Yeah, it's it's wonderful we can see what the camera sees because then we can really play to those shots. Right. Mm -hmm. So unlike an actor, when we're on camera as actors, of course, you're just completely, you know, at the mercy of what the camera's seeing, but we get to actually help adjust it. So if mm -hmm. the angle's a little more this way this time, we can play that. You so know? you're better th at hitting your light than like a big Hollywood actor. Well, no, I don't know if I'd <laughs> say that. We want to brag, but... Okay, carried away. <laughs> no, it really helps, uh, particularly if we've worked with a director who, who hasn't shot puppets before, we're constantly adjusting frame. We're helping the director compose the frame. And we're because we're seeing the monitor and they'll ask us to step and play the edge of frame because there are several, you know, puppets in the same shot together. So it I, I think it really helps uh, the director for us to be able to see what's mm -hmm. going on. And it's essential for us. I'm curious about working with a director who hasn't worked with puppets. Is there like a, a, a list of like here are some key things you need to know? This like that you yes. guys download at the beginning. The funniest thing is usually, and everyone has done this, is they'll usually come over to our puppets up in the air and give the puppets notes. <laughs> like they'll look at, and and like the joke constantly is is like is like we can't see you, you know, like, we're down there because they literally will, especially if like your puppet's sitting in a rock and they can't see the puppeteer, yeah. they'll be like, so Wendy, I need you to look over there. We're like, where? Yeah, like, like <laughs> eye line, they're like right here, eye line here, and I was like, these these aren't eyes. Yeah, these are ping pong these balls. These aren't eyes. We can't see this. <laughs> we're actually we're not able to see. Always happens. That's it's hilarious. A, it's really hilarious. And it's also the weirdness of you know you're hiding a, a human body underneath a frame, so sometimes like. You know, no other show you're gonna be. Like, There's a head in the shot. We got to stop. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. All, these, all these little things that we have to do to make these characters seem real that you wouldn't have to do on any other series. I think that's sometimes what the directors are like. Wait, what? You know? Yeah. Or, or even little things we say, like you know, our eye focus is off. Mm -hmm. You know, where else would you hear that? But it's true. It's like you know, if if Moki or Gobo's eye focus is just slightly off, sometimes mm -hmm. it makes them look not real. Yes. So it's it's those little things that the directors have to be aware of that, and, that we and need. Particularly to that point, when we have two cameras, sometimes the eye line will look great in camera A and look terrible in camera B. So we mm. always will, in that wow. case, ask which which camera should we favor at this point, and just and also say, just so you know, you can't use B here right, because right. the eye line's totally off, and they look insane if they're not. Because one of the things I, I, I heard this from, oh gosh, don't remember someone teaching puppetry is like, puppet. There's a lot the puppets can't do, but what they can do is eye focus. Yeah. And it's it's so it's so key. Wow. It's it's so it's, it's it's fundamental. It so it sounds like that one of the key things is that the, is to teach the directors how to trust you guys 
to be part of the process of solving, yeah. getting everything in the can by the end. Mm -hmm. of There's a lot of a lot of back and forth on how to make the shot work, and I'm the puppet captain on the show, and so part of my job is going to the director and saying, okay, for us to make this happen for you, we're going to need this, 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 and this. Are you okay with this? It's kind yeah. of like a give and take in a negotiation. Um, you know, I had a, a friend once say, I think it's so true that every shot on a puppet show is a special effects shot. If you yeah. think about it. No, it is. Because totally. it's always a trick of the eye. It's always an illusion. And something as simple as the character walks across the set and picks up a book, right? Which you could shoot in five seconds with an actor. It's like, no, we got to think about it. How is the puppet walking across the set? Are you seeing the legs? Is it full body? Is it half body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there something in front of the puppet to make sure you don't see below? Okay, when mm -hmm. you get to the book, are we going to stop tape because we need to attach the hand? Or is it a rig where the puppet's hand can curl and grip? So mm -hmm. it's like, are we yeah, rotting, the, rotting the arm? Are we rotting the book itself? So that we touch it, and and there's yeah. another puppeteer yeah. moving yeah. the book with. So yeah, it's it's a lot. I, I had a young roboticist reach out to me recently and ask me for advice. Uh, they were making a robot for a small film, and they asked me like, what kind of stuff should I know going on the set? And I said, well, you'll spend several weeks building this robot with the crew, with the director, and you're going to show up on set, and he's immediately going to ask you to do things that'll make you wonder <laughs> if he's paid any attention to anything you've said the whole time. And your job is to come up with. Figuring out what problem he wants to solve, not the question he's answering. Right. I'm sure you have to run that Very translation similar. all the time. Yeah, it's, if it's like, you know, we need the puppets to run over here and do this thing. It's like, okay, but they can't do this, but they can do that. It's a lot of yes and. It's like the, right. the, the rules of improv. It's like, okay, we can't do this, but what we can do is that. And like Donna was saying, like, they, they really can do so much if you give them the tools to do it, you know. But it is, you have to think about everything ahead of time. <laughs> so I, I, back in the day, I was a practical effects guy. And so I, my experience of practical effects was a nightmare, right? Because mm -hmm. I built this little rig that took me weeks. I show up on set, everyone has to stop and wait. And the <laughs> grips, everyone's standing there shaking their heads. Mm -hmm. And I got to do my little thing. But it sounds like it just sounds like you guys have really learned and understood how to build an environment where the opposite of that is the case, where mm -hmm. the special effect shot gets all the breath that it needs to get the story. Because otherwise, they're exactly how you see them right now. They're just not real, right. you know. And right. we, we have an amazing, in the case of Doozers, we have an amazing Doozer team who, God, God love them. They're always running around replacing batteries and stuff like that. Like this wonderful man named Jason, who's just so dedicated to making them look as great as possible. And, you know, he'll be sitting there like sweating bullets because the entire shot has, has ground to a halt because we're waiting for one Doozer who's like dead in the right. water. And so our job during that really is to keep the set light and have fun. So that's actually where a lot of this came from is like, you know, you'd be waiting for the Doozer in the vehicle. <laughs> His like head is falling off to be fixed, and we're like, well, let's just talk and make everyone laugh. And so that's that's also where a lot of that uh, camaraderie comes from. That collaboration yeah. is it's yeah. like we're all supporting each other. We're like supporting him as he's sweating, oh, trying to plug totally. in the thing. Totally. We're like, we don't want him to feel like yes. it's all on him. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so from little characters yes. to more traditional, what people think of as puppeted characters, yes. you guys perform these guys. We yes. do. This is Gobo and Moki Fraggle, and. Uh, Hi, Adam. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. And they're about as, you know, traditional <laughs> hand and rod puppet as you can get. Um, Gobo is a, a really basic hand and rod puppet, meaning that he doesn't have any uh, triggers or any mechanisms. You know, he's basically just, you know, my hand inside of here making his mouth move and it's got a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Now I notice you have some extra. Yes, I'm a little fancy. I, uh, I have fancy. an iMac. Oh. As it's called in the biz, <gasps> an eye mic. Oh, mm. look at that. Yeah. That's my, it, gives me, it makes me look smug. It really does. When I want to, or smug. sleepy, you know, sleepy, or sad, oh or, or surprised, or angry, wow. or all those things. Yes, I, I have servos in my head. And that's a great example of a mech that we improved for this version of Fraggle Rock. The original Moki had a mech that she could, uh, the performer could touch her two fingers together, her live hand fingers, and it would make just the eyes raise and then go back down. Okay. And then, you know, Donna has brought such an incredible life to this character yeah. in Back to the Rock that we wanted to uh, enhance her, her her personality and enhance her expression. So we, um, they built a brand new Mac that is completely... And so that's not a wire that comes through. That's electronics. That's it's electronic, a... mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, that, that hooks up, goes through here. It's a, basically a servo that's got incredible precision. So really just the way Donna rocks this uh, finger here translates right up there mm -hmm. for the guys. And also built by Tom Newby. Yeah. And at a certain mm -hmm. point, you just forget that it's there and it's just I do, the... yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, I just sort of work it. And I, when I heard that she had an iMac, I was like, oh, <laughs> I, I love an iMac. <laughs> yeah. And I will, uh, and I'm sure that my own eyes uh, do what whatever Moki's doing. They do. <laughs> they do. But <laughs> it's so great. 
Um, so yeah, it just becomes intuitive and, and second nature. But I do really work at it. It adds just adds so much. You know, it really does. It just yeah. really adds a lot. And I like they're they're not perfectly symmetrical, are they? Mm -mm. There's a little bit of asymmetricality. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes it interesting. Makes it more it's real. relatable. Yeah. You know. I got nothing. <laughs> you got sympathetic movement that is making me laugh. I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. head nod gives a lot a lot of movement here. Mm. Actually, I I mean he's he's so in a good way. He's very basic as a puppet, but they built this beautiful structure here with the mouth. This is a gasket rubber. Mm -hmm. And it's scored in a certain way that he can he can really get a lot of expression. Oh, wow. So what I can't do with my eyes, I can hopefully do with my mouth. So mm -hmm. I can get really, you know. And of course the the mm. yeah, my little arm, mm. mm. <laughs> which sells so much, right? It's good it for really a laugh. Does. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Oh, lots yeah. of scenes end with me going. <laughs> this is yeah. where most kids first see this expression. Yeah. Sesame Street and Fraggle yeah, Rock. The Fraggle Rock. Yes. Yeah. 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 But yeah, and then actually Moki got a complete makeover because the original Moki was in a robe and she had longer hair and she was a little bit more like, you know, drippy and, and kind of 60s hippie. And mm -hmm. we wanted to kind of refresh her for the show. So she got a complete makeover and she got shorter arms and she got a little bit of a new body shape and mm -hmm. she got this beautiful uh, dress. I love this dress. Got an updo, thank you. Got an updo. Yeah. I do, mm -hmm. the updo is great too. And, I, a, and a little zhuzh on the color, a little, little vibrancy. Because when you call it, you call it your... Mokeover. Mokeover. I got a mocha. See what we did there? There you go. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Also, I have to point out that I had the uh, amazing Kira Hall helping me, but right now Morgana is going to demonstrate because Moki's arms are so long. Mm -hmm. Morgana, do you mind stepping in for yeah, a second? Of course. I often have. She doesn't quite look right if one person does both arms. So I have oh, two wow. arms that can move yeah. simultaneously. We don't have a monitor or anything to see. But look at that movement. Yeah. Look at you. Right? <laughs> That's so we, a really so when we want to hug you, Adam, really, when yeah. we want to hug you. Oh, you do thank it. you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. It's delightful. Isn't that nice? Isn't that great? Thank you for that hug. You bet. Anytime. I'm jealous. When you're oh. <laughs> there we go. There okay. we go. There we go. There we go. I'll take it. Thank you, Morgana. When you're puppeting the second arm, is it? I'm just. It's like I. I. I I'm curious what the what the mindset is. Are you following the other one? Yes. Are you? Yeah. It's the hardest job. I was wondering. Yeah. When actually, you you usually start out in the world of puppetry as an apprentice doing right hands. Right. So right. Helping a right hander, and your entire job is to follow the main performer. And I started off very young doing that, and I remember every day it was like, <sighs> but it was just the most nerve wracking thing because you are. It's it's funny to think about it, but literally, if you just move this hand in the wrong way, if, if Donna turns you know a certain way and I don't follow, right, all of a sudden it looks like something. The whole thing's mm -hmm. ruined. The whole thing's ruined. And so when you're you know working with you know these incredible puppeteers like Frank Oz and Jerry Nelson and Carol Spinney, all these people you idolize and yeah. you are right handing for them, and we both have this experience. <laughs> It's and terrifying. You, it's, it's terrifying. Just that's just the word for but it. That's a great crucible. Yeah. Because you, there's you can get it right and no one will notice, but boy if you get it wrong it's, yeah. that is a terrible. And I've had assistants saying, "Is this okay? Is this okay?" It's like if if you don't hear anything from me, it's awesome. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if I don't notice it, then the audience won't and no one will go, "Whoa." It won't ring untrue for a second, so. But yeah. you, you actually create a, like Kira who right hands for Moki on the show. I mean, you guys have created such a symbiotic relationship for the character. And Kira Hall is amazing. Kira Hall is a mind reader. So I, <laughs> I rarely have to give a note at all. I rarely even have to make a suggestion. They just know. Um, when you're doing live hands for another puppeteer, that's that's even trickier. Oh, that's like Rolf and okay. Yes. Yeah, so your hands are inside and so yeah, because you're oh. really you're really really close. I mean, and you're, you're wrapped around them, space. right? Kind of yeah. yes. And then you someone may want to put the hand on the back or hold onto a belt loop just so. And if you're traveling, you really gotta you've oh, got so to catch up. To fake that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, yeah. This is there's some flexibility, right? Because you have this. Yeah, distance. I can be three feet right. away yeah, and assist exactly. Johnny. And if I walk, Donna can still come. But if I'm, you know, doing a right hand and I'm attached, oh and my you God. pull me, it's like I better be ready to go. So it's a, it's a really trusting. That sounds even more. So it sounds like the harder jobs are way at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But you get to watch and learn, you know, and you you pick up things and you you, uh, you know, I feel like it's such a great training ground because you you get to be part of the shot and right. learn how important the composition is and how every single thing matters and how everything comes together, but you don't have the pressure of delivering the right. lines or delivering the funny. You have the time to kind of take it in. Mm -hmm. I imagine that there might be things you learn from puppeteers you right-handed for that you now pass on to people right-handing for you. Sure. 
like a, a bit of grace or a bit of mm -hmm. latitude to yeah. understand. Makes, Absolutely. Makes you more patient for sure, yeah. you know, and, and you remember that feeling. You remember that, that you know, you want to get it right because you want you want yeah. that shot to look good and you don't want to be the person to mess it up. So we also try to celebrate our right hands a lot too. If they do a beautiful job doing something really tricky, like picking something up or, you know, we really mm -hmm. take the moment to celebrate that because we remember what that's like. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. we always thank our assistants after every scene. Good, always. that's lovely. Yeah. The well, <laughs> oh, oh, don't fall. Sorry, sorry. I, was, you. I got a little too casual there. I'm feeling so relaxed in your presence. Yeah, <laughs> you're good at that. You guys have been really excellent hosts. Thank Thanks, you so Mr. much Adam. for having me. Thank you, Adam. Today. Group hug. Really oh, yay! Oh, thank you. Oh my God. You. I'm we so happy love. right now. Fraggle loves the best love. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. Turns out, yeah. there it is. Oh, thank no. you, guys. <laughs> Hold on to your Belubiuses, because I know exactly where we should go. Tell us in song. Hey, okay, it's a party down in Fraggle Rock today.